Hi, I'm Francois E, the uh, Director of Advanced Urological Care here in New York City, New York. And uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the different penile implant pumps that are available. But first, I want to describe the uh, inflatable penile implant for those of you who are not familiar with it. The inflatable penile implant has three major components, the cylinders, a pump, and a reservoir. And the uh, pump, uh, come, there are three different pumps available on the market, and there are uh, two companies available uh, for inflatable penile implants, Coloplast and American Medical System from Boston Scientific. Both companies have been around for many years. The inflatable penile implant was invented in 1973, and it's an extremely uh, reliable and successful device. Many, many implants, over 50% of the implants will last uh, 10 years or more. I've had patients with the Coloplast Classic pump last uh, 25, 26 years and still working uh, well. So let's talk about the different attributes of the penile implant. I want to first start with describing parts of the uh, pump. Here we have the uh, three different pumps available in the United States right now. All the way on the right, you have the Coloplast Classic, and that pump has been around for many, many years. You have the Coloplast Touch Pump, and this uh, pump has uh, been on the market for over 10 years now, and it's uh, the newer Coloplast pump. And then you have the AMS uh, Momentary Squeeze Pump that's been on the market <laughs> also for more than uh, 10 years. Now let's talk about the bulb first. You'll see the AMS bulb. To inflate, you have to squeeze this bulb. One of the drawbacks of the AMS pump is that it doesn't have a neck. So you have to imagine that this inside the patient is going to be more difficult to grasp. And that's very important because as the pressure builds up in the cylinders, the pressure equilibrates with the pump and then it becomes harder to inflate. And if you have a difficulty grasping the pump, then you cannot generate enough pressure to get a very firm erection. So there is some work to do with this pump. This needs to be redesigned for a, a more um, user-friendly ergonomic uh, design. Looking at the uh, touch pump, um, you can see that there is a neck that can be grasped. The touch pump uh, has increased resistance to uh, inflow into the cylinder, so it's a little bit more pressure to deliver fluid to the cylinders, as opposed to the other Coloplast pump called the Classic. And the deflation feature is uh, over here. It's a uh, touch. You touch it once, release it, and the penis will come down sort of naturally. Uh, and that is a, a, a nice feature that's appreciated by patients who want the implant to be discreet and not have the partner know that they have an implant, period. <clears throat> the um, classic pump is easy to grasp. You can see that there is a very a neck here that you can actually grab it. And then to deflate, you press these two bars. What's very interesting about this from an ergonomic point of view is patients will then sometimes fumble and try to find the deflation. And what they do is they'll press over here and the pump will swivel and sort of orient itself automatically so that it's easy for the patients to deflate. So the patient actually find this uh, deflation bars despite not feeling, not having any tactile feel for the bars. So that's very, very interesting to me the way things uh, work. Now, one of the drawbacks of the touch is that the nipple is very shallow and it's very difficult for patients to find this. And sometimes they'll be pressing here thinking that they're deflating. And so for the older patients with uh, poor uh, sensitivity of the fingers, uh, this may not uh, be the best uh, choice. The deflation uh, nipple of the AMS pump, as you can see, is fairly raised, and that's really a uh, good design, easy to find, and there is a little vibration when patients feel this, they know they're deflating, so it's a little bit easier to, to find the deflation, and 
it's um, good for uh, the older patients. So the deflation feature of the AMS uh, uh, pump is actually qu uh, quite good. <clears throat> now, one of the things we worry about uh, these pumps is duration. Duration of uh, how long does the implant last before it breaks. And we've noticed that some of the tubing is uh, failing prematurely. If the tubing rubs against each other, uh, it fails. And this uh, classic pump has amazing durability uh, because I believe the way the tubing is oriented, it's uh, a uh, nice uh, in series as opposed to the uh, touch, which you can see it looks like a little tripod, the way the tubing is oriented. And again, for the uh, momentary squeeze pump, it's also a tripod. Now what that does is when the pump is lying on the scrotum, it, it tends to um, orient the tubing so that they touch each other and they rub each other and it creates a groove which exposes the filament and then they start to leak. And so these pumps have been uh, failing uh, between um, 8 and 12 years, uh, which uh, uh, it's unfortunate because the cylinders and the reservoir are extremely durable. They, they will last a lifetime if it wasn't for the failure of the tubing. The classic because the tubing is uh, sort of in series, uh, when it lies in the scrotum, it's easy to separate the tubing and there is less stress where the tubing is uh, bending here. And so they tend to last a very long time. Thank you. There's another aspect to these pumps, which is interesting. And that is how um, much noise do they make when the patient inflates? Now, the classic pump is the noisiest because it's easy to inflate, fluid flows quickly through the valves and it makes a noise. It makes a whining noise, sort of a And so if a patient um, 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 wants to have a discreet uh, sexual encounter uh, where the partner doesn't know that they have an implant, which is often the case in a younger crowd, then uh, you, one would have to inflate in the bathroom or inflate discreetly before going to bed. Uh, this is a, a fairly quiet pump. It doesn't make any noise at all. And, and the, um, the touch pump makes a little bit of noise, but not as much as the classic pump. So the, the, uh, the uh, uh, classic pump is the noisiest. One of the nice thing about the touch is again, that you squeeze it once, release, and then the penis will deflate on its own, which is sort of a, a natural way to lose the erection. Again, if uh, one doesn't want the partner to know that there is a pump in there, then uh, the, uh, the, this is a, a nice way of losing the erection. On the other hand, the classic, you have to press and continue to press on the release valve in order to uh, have the penis deflate. And then with the contralateral hand, one wishes to squeeze the shaft of the penis in order to deflate the erection. So it's a little bit more cumbersome to deflate and uh, less discreet than with the touch or MS pump.